What about Ghislaine Maxwell? She's been in the news over the last couple of weeks. She's been found guilty of these acts of sex trafficking. She's awaiting sentencing. There's talk of sort of 65 years in prison. And she was part of this group with Jeffrey Epstein. And the story continues in the news with the allegations against Prince Andrew. And I read some of the evidence from Annie Farmer, one of the named uh, victims um, of the abuse, of the degrading treatment, of the trafficking, of the pimping out that went on. And in one sense, from the Being Human Project perspective, it's relatively straightforward to talk about the dignity and the value and the worth of those victims. Um, I was listening to a podcast this week and it talked about the early church fathers, Augustine and others, and their writing, in fact, around the importance of reaching out and restoring and providing healing for victims of sexual abuse. Because in Roman culture, that was incredibly common. And so it was something that the early church dealt with a lot as people came from that culture and sought refuge in the church. But what do you do with Ghislaine Maxwell? Where is the dignity and the image bearing in her? A friend of mine was involved in anti-trafficking work and he talked about uh, travelling to Cambodia or Thailand. And the team would go out each day and they'd work with some of the victims and the girls on the street who'd been trafficked and they'd chat with them and potentially provide pathways for them to safe spaces, to counselling pathways out of the, the world in which they had been forcibly put into. But then he talked about one or two evenings where he and some others would go out onto the streets and meet the Johns. And I could feel within myself this sense of resentment. How could you? Those are despicable people who carry out such evil against these young women. And yet he said it was so essential. He said, how can we not? They are the source of the problem. While they're there, it will continue. But also, they're image bearers. God loves those people. How do we minister to them? And it was a deeply challenging conversation. There were no easy answers. We talked before in the podcast about Stephen Fry's podcast, Seven Deadly Sins, and he talks about the problem of evil and suffering in the world and how we have a name for this, and the name is sin, but we don't like to use it. But unless we can engage in the sinfulness and the brokenness and the evil in this world, how can we talk about what it means to be human? How can we wrestle with what it means for Ghislaine Maxwell to be made in the image of God? Final story this week that I think is relevant is Stephen Timms, the uh, Labour MP, who uh, has talked this week about the attack that happened uh, 11 years ago. When a lady came to his constituency office, he thought she was about to lean, come forward and shake his hand, but actually she had a knife and she stabbed him. And she's serving time in prison and three letters have come to light that she's written to him. And in one of them, she talks about wanting to meet him as part of a restorative justice program. And he talks as a Christian MP about his desire to meet with her and to forgive her and to see restoration in that. Perhaps that's just a little glimpse about how we see the humanity, the image bearing in somebody who has tried to kill us. And so as we read some of the stories in the news this week, the challenge is what does it mean to be human? How do we see the image bearing significance in those with whom we profoundly disagree, who are doing horrific and horrendous things in our world? How do we wrestle with the challenge of evil and perhaps see something restorative and forgiving in the journey of somebody like Stephen Timms. Be blessed.